All right, guys, in this video, we're going to be replacing the controller and the chain um, to the back wheel, building the battery pack, and I think we'll replace the throttle and the brake lever, but I think we'll do that off camera. Um, so let's get into it. All right, so when I got the new throttle controller in, there's one thing I noticed different. So here's the old one, and here is the new one. The problem is... If I line up the bottom ears down here, it's the new one's a little bigger. So the holes on the bracket don't line up all the way. So what you have to do, I mean you can zip tie it, but I made a, an adapter plate and the countersunk holes you see here are for the original screws. So they go through and they thread into the backing plate that's back here. So let me move this a little bit so you can see it better. Sorry for the glare. And then these are tapped so the screws can go into the um, to the throttle, the new throttle controller here. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this. And uh, one thing I did is I made the uh, when I redrilled the holes for this, since this is going to act like a spacer almost, I don't want to hit the uh, um, shock. So the holes are actually down below. So it actually pushes the controller back a little bit and down. So now that's on there. Uh, one issue I had with this material is it's too thin uh, to properly countersink the holes. So these stick out a little bit proud. Um, so I took a piece of, you know, I was looking around what I had left around and I uh, took a piece of cutting board as just pretty much a spacer. So that way it actually has a nice flat surface for the controller to fit on. So that part's done. All right, we're getting ready to put the chain on. The chain I got had um, it was three foot long, but you don't need one that long, so I'm gonna have to cut it down. It also came with a master link, which is one of those like almost like a quick connect link. Um, it's like a split link. Um, so to measure it, I know that these come standard with a hundred and thirty two links, and the pitch which is the distance between the rollers is a quarter of an inch so 132 times a quarter inch is 33 inches so the best way instead of sitting here counting links just line it up with the tape measure and mark the the last link at 33 inches make sure you add the uh, master link to it because that will be included so as you can see there I got the master link on the end and as you can see there's four links for every inch so these are quarter inch so marked it all the way out went to stretched it out to 33 inches and right there see how I put the mark there that's how I know how to or which link to or which pin to knock out all right so what I'm using I, I have an arbor press what you can do is you could pretty much Put the links in a vise and use a punch to knock it out. Uh, you can also buy you know preformed ones um, that already have 132 links. That, that's that's an easier way. But I like the one with the master link, so that way if I ever had to take the chain off for any reason, I can just quickly disconnect it without removing the wheel. So if I can get a good angle here for you guys. So what I did, I have an arbor press and it has a hollow tip, so I put a punch in it uh, that's mounted here. I just took a scrap bracket, drilled a through hole, and then put a divot next to it, so the next adjacent pin, so that um, chain will actually sit a little bit um, more flat on this plate. So I find my mark, which is right there, and I'm gonna set this plate up to where the 
punch goes through here. And then I'll sit it in like that. I'll take you around here so you can see better. So I'm putting the marked piece kind of in that divot there. I've got my press lined up and I should be able to just press that through. All right, boom. There's the pin, knocked it out. Pull this back up, and there, now our chain separated. All right, so now we're gonna put the chain on. Um, what I do is I take the bot, what's gonna be the bottom rung, and I feed it through the chain tension, and this will be on top of the ball bearing that's uh, on the t tensioner. We'll grab the end through here, like so, and we'll wrap the rest of it through the rear sprocket. So we'll bring it out here where you can hopefully see it a little better. All right, so now I take the master link and I clip it through one and then the other. We'll put the full link on. Squeeze those together. Now when you put the clip of the link on, you want the open, now if you're doing the top rung up here, you see that mouth, you want it facing towards the rear. So when this thing spins clockwise, as long as it doesn't hit anything, it should push it back onto the link. If you have it this way, it could snag something and that disconnects your chain. So now we find where our link piece is, put it on, and we, see if I can knock that clip into place. <clears throat> there we go. So there. See how it's clipped on there? So now all we gotta do, make sure the chain is still on the back sprocket, push your tensioner down give you some more slack Hi. all right and there we go now check your alignment on everything and everything should be good to go uh, if you get if it gets tight, you could take the uh, free wheel or the sprocket and rotate it. And now, usually, if you get it on a couple teeth, you could do that, and it locks itself on place or in place. So it looks like everything's good on this side. So we're done with this part. All right, moving on to the battery packs. Um, this is pretty much the orientation that they are. If you're facing the left side of the bike, not not the way I have it up here, but. Um, Terminals for the bottom two face you, and the terminals face the front of the or the bike for the upper level one. Um, this is what was on it when I got it, and remember these, the batteries were replaced, so they put these little quick connects on here, but I'm gonna do it more like what the factory had, and I'm gonna crimp terminals to it. I'm gonna put them on here, I'm gonna solder them, put heat shrink over them, and then we'll hot glue around it for some strain relief. Um, so we'll go ahead with uh, we'll do this first terminal here. Usually these come with these little protective caps. Make sure that's off. Um, so I'm going to take, I'm going to cut the end off here, and we'll strip it because I'm putting a new terminal on. So we get that right there. All right, so we got it stripped off here. And again, this is this uh, style that will cramp around the um, conductor and the insulator. 
Actually, with these being so thick, I think I'm gonna load it up after. I'll put it in there. There we go, we'll do the next one. See, there you go. And I'll just continue that and I'll knock them all out. All right, so I got it crimped on. And make sure you put heat shrink on first. Um, and so we're gonna be soldering these on. So I'm gonna take a little bit, pretty much anything I solder, I put a little bit of flux on just to burn out any contaminants. So what we'll do is we'll slide that on like so. I'll actually bend it up just a hair. There we go. So I got a uh, old Weller soldering iron here. And let's see if we can get this thing on here. Actually, I need to tin this a little bit. You don't want to work it too much because you don't want that heat to transfer you know into the battery itself so this is actually still pretty cool so i'm going to wiggle a little bit make sure we get a good bond and it looks like we do if you can see that right there so pretty much just enough to flood the, the gap between the terminal and here Pretty much you use quick connects, you're just asking for um, a bad connection here uh, with if you're not using solder. And that's why the factory does it. So now we got our heat shrink here. Let me grab a, a torch. We'll shrink that on there. There's that. So I'll go through and I'll do the rest of them. I'll show that and then we'll, uh, we'll add the glue pot melt to it. All right, it's got everything uh, soldered on and heat shrunk. Uh, time to add some glue. Uh, just basic regular hot melt glue here. Make sure you pump it real good underneath. looks globby and nasty but it helps it out all right uh, pretty much letting those cool down a little bit and cloud up uh, I was using a tiny hot glue gun so you can tell the heat was hot here and then started getting a lot of uh, heat dissipation from that little unit that's why it got a little extra globby and round over here but either way, it works fine. Now the, uh, you know, to double check, make sure that we got this right. Let's see, make sure you can see that down there. Hold on. Go 
38.4 so I think we're good again make sure they're in series don't and make sure it's positive negative negative positive uh, and on to putting these into the bike there we get the batteries put in uh, went ahead and clamp those down put a few other wires and everything in here um, got everything connected now I'm going to test it out and make sure everything works. So we're going to take the switch, going to connect this. I got the throttle here. So I'm going to turn it on and I'll angle it so the back wheel is up. So we got on and full power. So now we'll rotate it. So that works. New brake handle works. Um, I think right now we're just gonna tidy up all the wiring and uh, button it back up. I went ahead and plastic dipped the fenders and everything. So when you see this thing again, it's it's already going to be painted. So we'll put it together and uh, we'll take it for a test run. See if this rebuilds is a success. Well, looks like we're done putting it back together. It's here for the initial test ride. You ready, Malaya? All right, let's go. Well, it looks like it's a success. Woo! All right, thanks for watching, guys.